significant mite burden, and there was a lot of mites that fell out of the colony, and they uh, they seemed to, to survive it well and to uh, be healthy going into winter. So, What kind of quantities did you use? Are you going to talk about that? Yeah. So um, there's some, uh, you know, Emmerine in his article, he has some recommendations that they've refined. You know, you want to use 50% formic acid. If the formic acid is too concentrated, then it, it doesn't form the proper amount of vapor. And if it's too weak, it doesn't uh, penetrate into the uh, cells. So he actually claims that you penetrate into the cells and kill mites within the, the drone brood cells. And they did uh, studies where they pulled the drone brood out and found, you know, the majority of the mites within the drone brood were killed. Um, so if you're going to treat a colony that occupies two deeps, and uh, then you would put 85 mLs of the formic acid mixture, and then you add 15 mLs of uh, honeybee healthy, which he found uh, reduces the queen kill. So if you don't put the honeybee healthy in, then you're more likely to, to kill the queen. So uh, if you have one and a half deeps, say a, a deep and a medium, or half the frames are filled, then you would put 75 uh, mLs of uh, formic acid. And if you're only treating one deep, then you put 60 mL of uh, formic acid. So there's a little bit of refinement as to exactly how much formic acid is put in there. Mix the formic acid and the honeybee healthy together? Um, he does it both ways. So in, when he describes his technique with the uh, fumigation uh, screen, he uh, mixes them together. When he does the filter paper, he puts a formic acid on the filter paper and then he puts in a paper towel and he puts the honeybee healthy in the on a paper towel separate from the formic acid. So Does that lay on the top of the frame? Just lay it on top of the frames and you put the honey before the honeybee healthy on top of there. Are there temperature constraints? You want to uh, treat colonies between the temperature of 60 degrees and 90 degrees. So it needs to be warm enough so that the, uh, the vapors are going to form uh, but not too You should tab all the honey you're going to take out, but uh, formic acid is contained in honey, so that's one of the uh, advantages of the technique, is you're using a chemical that's in the hive already, you're just using it as a higher concentration. The, uh, the mites' uh, skin, their, their shell, uh, allows the formic acid to get in and kill them. The bees have a protective shell that the formic acid doesn't get in and kill them. So. That's why I kill the mites and not the bees. There's some young bees that if they've just emerged and they're still kind of light and fluffy, they're going to get killed by the formic acid. So you're going to kill a few of the very young, recently uh, emerged bees. What about the philosophy of not treating uh, versus treating based on the fact that the mites, you know, mutate or you know, become resistant, that's what I'm trying to say. So the method that this technique kills the mites it's unlikely that they're going to uh, develop a resistance to. So it's, oh, good. Very. Can we see your felt board briefly? Sure. I can pass it around. I got some more. How easy or difficult is it to obtain a 50% solution of formic acid? The, um, the formic acid comes 90% if you buy it, you know, wholesale in bulk and then you need to dilute it to 50%. So there's some you know, simple uh, basic chemistry calculations you can make to see how much you should precisely dilute it. If you want to measure the, um, the specific gravity, if you have the ability to measure the specific gravity of formic acid, it would be 1.110. So uh, I don't have that ability. I was thinking about taking it to the lab at the hospital. Say, hey, well, you know, you measure your own, you can measure this. But I didn't get around to doing that. There's a, in one of the articles of uh, Amarine, he has three glasses, one with 90% formic acid, one with 50% formic acid, and one with water. And he put a cherry tomato in each one, and he says that in a cherry tomato, it floats with, you know, four millimeters above the solution, 50% there's two millimeters above, and in water it sinks. <laughs> so I put a cherry tomato in this stuff, and it seemed to float, right? So, you know, I got 90%. I diluted it the way that the uh, basic chemistry would say, and it, it, the cherry tomato floats Did you right dilute there. it with water? 
to dilute it with water. I guess my real question is, where does the person with one or two hives get formic acid? Get formic acid. Um, I got mine from Dana. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I don't know that, I think that source may have run out. Um, there is, uh, Dr. Amarine in his articles has a few recommendations of where you can obtain some formic acid. There was a bottle that was already diluted 50% that uh, Dana gave with me that was, uh, has a company name on it. Um, so I think, you know, maybe you know, a local beekeeper supplier could uh, purchase some and provide it for all these people here. Well, I, I've heard we could, we could you want to get into that? Thing. I don't know if it's even legal for me to resell it. So. Yeah, I mean, I'm very sick of this. So on the black market, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> the reason for the aluminum on top is to contain the fumes. The aluminum is to contain the or kind of heat, to contain the heat and the fumes. The screen on the inside is to keep the bees from chewing on the on the felt. On the felt. And that's a frame within a frame. Is that because of the felt width or? It's because you want to put the bee space in between so the bees can get around it. So I think that's why it's, you know, I just, I replicated as close as I could what was Dr. Amarine has done, so. What's in bee health? Honey Bee Healthy has two essential oils, uh, wintergreen and spearmint, I think. Lemongrass. Lemongrass, lemongrass. And so that is also a, development of Dr. Amarine to, to uh, and it smells great. It does smell good. Oh, it's you great. Get on your hands and it's just it's it tastes fun. good too. <laughs> <laughs> That's how good it smells. It makes you want to eat it. By the way, when you came in the bee yard tonight, you looked at the front of these hives, and the bees were not hanging out in front like these others. The big ass and the bees hang around. They get the brain. Our hive doesn't have the hives here. Keep them out of the hive. They don't want to be in there. So while well, they're out there, just throw some powder sugar on them and <laughs> give them a double whammy. I don't know why you couldn't, but I don't know why, you know. They've been exposed to formic acid, so whatever mites is on them, yeah. should have. Uh, the formic acid is available from chemical supply companies. If you're wondering where to get the formic acid, uh, just take the telephone directory and look up. You've got the, okay. Joy is on the ball. So you put the formic acid on the clock in front of the uh, carpet? I hate to ask, I'll keep asking all the long questions. But, okay. uh, but things I've been reading, they're saying that formic acid is very dangerous to your skin. You need to wear these protective gear and yeah. protective gloves. And I see you're not doing that. Is, is it just the literature over... Or states it, is that um, I got a little bit on my hand. It didn't really hurt me too much. Uh, the fumes 